I was pointed to these TMR joysticks on AliExpress. The image of the joystick looked quite different than the two basic designs that I see in all the other joysticks I've reviewed. So I was looking forward to getting my hands on these. Well aware that a picture may or may not convey the actual mechanics of the joystick. Good service. Only took about two weeks to get. I think this is my third or fourth order from the NH game store. Box got roughed up a bit, I'm sure in transit. But looks like the joysticks are well wrapped in bubble wrap. Okay, yeah, they look good. I don't see any smashed. Yeah, they look fine. I don't even see any pins bent out of shape. The mechanism does look different than the two basic designs, so the picture was accurate. I've never heard of the brand ZESUM. Looks like a pretty good sized company in Shenzhen. They have a few joysticks listed on their website. The potentiometer version of this stick is listed, but not the TMR version. Let me tear into this thing and see what we have. I'll pop the sensor off. Magnet is in the center of the shaft. That is just like the K-Silver JS13 Pro sticks. Not a very strong magnet, but the sensor housing is quite a bit different. But it does seem the poles are at the end of the magnet. So again, like the JS13 Pro sticks. Unlike the JS13 Pro, this magnet is really mounted in its holder very firmly. It is really in there. I'll wait to get the shaft piece out to double check the pole locations. I keep trying to get this magnet out. I'm going to end up damaging a finger. There are four tabs bent over the base plate holding it together. Now that is like all the other joysticks. Even with the tabs bent free, the base is not falling off. The base seems to be a tight fit in the metal housing. That is a bit different. There we go. Okay, yeah, this is completely different design right there. So the one axis is more attached to the metal housing than the moving shaft. This would be the left-right axis on the DualSense. Let me double check where the poles are. Yes, the end of the magnet are the poles, just like the JS13 Pros. The other axis is held onto the joystick shaft with some raised plastic bumps on the shaft, and it's on there pretty good. That is a very solid piece of plastic with the magnet well mounted in it. The shaft looks to have a ball on the end of it, and there is a sleeve holding it in place. It looks like the sleeve has some tabs that clip under some ears on the base plate. Difficult to see, but the sleeve has a flat on one side. Hard to grab, but let me see if I can turn it and release the tabs. Yes, and of course it's under spring tension, so it flies apart. So this is a completely different joystick mechanism. All the previous joysticks I've looked at fall under the basic favor union type design, or the Alps type. It's nice to see something new. The part of the joystick that presses on the switch is buried deep inside the joystick. Looks like the spring even rests on it. This is the reason the switch in this joystick has a bit different feel to it. There is more of a spring feel to pushing the switch, and this layout completely explains that feel. The force to actuate the switch is transferred through the spring. I would think the little protrusions on the pieces are to keep the pieces lined up and in place. The half a sphere on the end of the shaft fits through the opening of the sleeve, holding it in position. And the small metal plate makes for a good long-lasting surface for the spring to press against, forming something similar to a ball joint. The switch itself has a nice click feel to it. It's actually a lot of fun to take apart a new joystick when the pieces aren't just a copy of previously disassembled joysticks. Really is nice to see a different design. Of course, the real test will be to get them installed in a controller and see how they do. There are six molded plastic pieces, two stamped metal pieces, and one spring. Joystick mechanism cost is probably not much different than the other two designs. The inside of the sensor is a bit different. The center molded open area is not a tight fit for the magnet holder, but it is a close fit. The way the shafts fit in the housing, I don't see them moving around much, but this will definitely keep them in alignment. The IC has an XQA, and I would say that this is a date or lock code, and I expect the 3D to be the marking code. 
But either way, this is the same TMR sensor I see that is in the JS13 Pro sticks. And this will be a big test. This has the same sensor I see as the JS13 Pro, but a completely different joystick mechanism. So it will be very interesting to see how the range error compares to the K-Silver JS13 Pro. The backside of the sensor is pretty bare. Sure it would be nice to at least have a logo. It's a pretty thin sensor, but it's raised down at the pin area. The worst area to be raised. I will test these in an edge stick module, but that little bit of extra plastic at the bottom will probably cause a problem. It is a very small single sided circuit board, and the only part on the board is the TMRIC. It is nice that it has the pin signals labeled. Maybe the A is a first version. Even though I'm quite sure this is the same sensor I see, I'm going to run my electrical test on it. Just like the sensor in the JS13 Pro, this one is a bit tricky to get the sensor in the right position as to not saturate the output amp and at the same time getting enough output. The yellow trace is the current through the electromagnet and represents the magnetic field. The green trace is the output of the sensor. And this waveform would represent the joystick moving from left to right in a dual sense controller. Now here's a sweep speed of one millisecond of division and it's fast like all the TMR sensors and looks identical to the sensor in the JS13 Pro. If you want to see the full timing test, I will put a link to the JS13 Pro review in the description. All the sensor information will be the same. Current draw for the sensors is around 230 to 240 microamps. All the TMR sensors I've tested have been right around this range. Less than a third of the power consumption of a potentiometer based joystick. Center position voltage distribution seems to be well within 10% of the 900 millivolts. I've got to get a set of these in a controller and see how they feel. If they have the smoothness of the JS13 Pro sticks, then I would say that is coming from the center mounted magnet. If they don't, then K-Silver has done something mechanically to improve the smoothness of their new joystick. Either way, it will be interesting. These are going in a BDM-020 DualSense mainboard. Mechanically, they fit just fine. I'll make sure it's working correctly and then put it back together. I'll speed through the calibration, stick center, and then stick range, and then save the changes. Now to the Gamepad Tester website. First I will take a look at the circularity. Pretty well matched joysticks. I like to see the average error in the 6 to 8% range with a pretty balanced circle. The right joystick is very well balanced and I would say the left is about average. They look very good to me. Now my spring return to center test. Seems to be within two counts or less every time, which is good. But this joystick feels to have a bit more tension than an Alps. This is the new test I've started. I'm trying to see how large the mechanical center area is. I try to see how far off of zero I can move the stick without it returning. I'll start with the left joystick. Axis zero goes from a minus one count to a three count. So a center area of four counts. In axis one I can't really get a full minus one count three counts to the positive side. I'm going to say a center area of three counts. Now the right joystick and axis two. Zero counts to the left and three counts to the right, so an area of three counts. Axis 3 is 0 counts up and between 2 and 3 counts down, I'll call it 3 counts on the axis. So a really small mechanical center area for this joystick. I can see where the design of it could be very advantageous for returning to center. Here is the joystick mounted on an edge stick module circuit board. The most important point in mounting the stick is to make sure it is mounted flush with the board. You can see how the bottom part of the plastic sensor housing sticks out a little bit. I'll align the flats on the knob with the joystick shaft and push the knob on, and then try to position the circuit board on the alignment pins. It's so close. 
but the sensor opposite the switch is bumping into the case. It looks to be maybe a couple hundredths of an inch from fitting. Fortunately, there is a pretty easy fix. I have my plastic melting tip on the soldering iron and the tip temperature set to 530 degrees, about 280C. And I'm going to remove the plastic that is on the bottom corners of the sensor housing of the sensor opposite the switch. I want to make sure the melted plastic doesn't fill in the alignment hole in the circuit board. I'm probably taking off a bit more than I need to, but there's no reason not to. There are some very small surface mount devices on the top of the circuit board and you don't want to hit any of them. You just want to reduce the thickness of the plastic on the corners of the housing. This edge stick module has already had the right protect modification done to it. I will put a link in the description to a video about that process. And that is all it took. Fits right in place, board is on the alignment pins and flush with the case. And now it's ready to be reassembled and then calibrated. After calibration, here is what the circularity looks like. The left stick is the ZSIM joystick and it matches the results from the DualSense test. The right stick is a K-Silver JS13 Pro. They are both between 6 and 8% error. The case silver is a bit more balanced, but that will vary joystick to joystick, even with the same model. There is a, feels like a rough spot in the right bottom quadrant, and only when I'm out near the edge. It's not horrible, but it doesn't feel good. The two I used in the DualSense felt fine, and this one is improving with my movement of it. Maybe some mold flash that didn't get removed or a bit of debris got in it. It's not bad, and it is getting better, but I can still feel it. These do feel like they have more tension than a standard Alps joystick, and I'm getting a reading of about 70 to 71 grams, and the Alps was around 64, 65 grams. There is another measurable difference here that can be felt. Notice how the force starts low and goes up pretty evenly. Now here's an Alps joystick. Notice how there is a force up in the 70s gram range for the first part of the joystick movement and then it drops back. You can feel it on the Alps. It is a bit harder to move off center and then the tension goes down. I have to say it was fun tearing into a different joystick design. It's a wonderful thing to see. The one that ended up going in the edge module had a small rust spot near the outer edge of movement. I checked the rest of the joysticks and they were fine. It did get better with a little use, but if you order these, you may want to move the joystick around its range and make sure the movement is smooth. I hadn't really thought about it, but that would probably be a good idea for any new joystick. I mean, how much QA are you going to get for something that sells for around $2? The entire feel of these joysticks is a bit different. The switch is the most noticeable. It is a much more springy feeling switch. I kind of like it. I can't say it's better or worse, it's just different. Before you install them, you might want to put a thumb knob on them and try the switch out. See how you like it. It's that different. These are a little bit stiffer than the standard Alps OEM joystick. Not by much, but it is noticeable. The stiffness does have some footnotes to go with it though. They are actually a little easier to move off center than the Alps, and then the tension goes up against the Alps having a greater tension at the start of the movement and the tension goes down. Again, they just have a different feel. Not good or bad, just different. I like a very low tension joystick, so these are not going to be one of my favorites. But they seem to have an excellent return to center. And the mechanically free movement area is quite small. So if you're looking for something with a very tight center area, these may be just what you're looking for. It would probably be the best selling feature of them. Now these don't have the smoothness of the JS13 Pros, so it's not that the magnet being center mounted creates the smooth feeling. It must be something mechanical with the JS13 Pro joysticks. I'll have to look into that a bit more. That being said, I've got a few hours of use on these and they'll do fine. I even like the tension going up the further joystick is moved. Still too much tension for my taste, but these work well. If you're looking for something different, 
then these may be the ticket. Thank you for watching.